All right, so as everyone's updating their bios to say spatial computing experts and getting in their Apple Vision Pro orders, there are some noticeable absences from the third party lineup. No Netflix, no YouTube, and no Spotify just to name a few. Now, I certainly got my pre-order in. I'll be getting it day one, so stay tuned for a video on that. But a lot of folks have been asking me, hey, what do you think about the Apple Vision Pro versus the MetaQuest 3, a bunch of the stuff that Sony's doing, etc." Now, I spent a decade in tech, predominantly at Google, working exclusively in AR, VR, and 3D maps. So I've got a couple of thoughts. And what I wanna start by telling you is that Get ready for overlapping metaverses. I mean, this is just iOS and Android playing out in the VR realm. In a way, with AR Kit and AR Core, which is Apple and Google's AR platform respectively, this is already the case. Now, as far as the Quest is concerned, which by the way, is the largest install base of any headset today, Meta has been remarkably open in their support of Steam VR. Sure, they got a little bit of crap for it, but they quickly reversed their position. And I mean, YouTube VR is consistently one of the top apps on the Quest. In other words, there actually seems to be a theme with Meta's perhaps ironic open strategy, with AI being another case in point, given the work they're doing with Llama and Llama 2. But as far as Apple is concerned, we are definitely getting blue and green bubbles in 3D, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yeah. That's exactly what we're getting. Now, regarding these apps not appearing on Vision Pro at launch, I wonder if it's actually because the install base isn't going to be meaningful enough to invest in the near term. What I mean by that is, think of the Vision Pro like the Tesla Roadster. Super expensive, super high-end, effectively a developer kit and a gadget for early adopters. It'll take a Tesla Model 3 style headset to really get to meaningful numbers. And once that happens, even if there are net more Android VR style headsets in the wild, there will still be an iOS first, Android later bias with developers because those users in the Apple ecosystem will likely be more lucrative customers. I just hope that we continue to converge on 3D authoring tools and content formats so we can enjoy the same content experiences regardless of the headset that you're in. Now, speaking of content, immersive media is going to be one of the key things Apple is touting as a part of this release. At a high level, I describe their use case as a connected living room. This is a media consumption device that that's expensive, it's heavy, and they want you to enjoy it in the comfort of your home. And the type of content they want you to experience is a lot like this. Now, if you're not familiar, Apple has a huge media initiative in the form of Apple TV+. Plus. So even before Apple announced the Vision Pro, I was already hearing rumors that Apple is working on VR media content. And what I mean by that is exceedingly high resolution stereoscopic VR video for their headset. Now, Apple has made strategic investments in the past on the video editing side, on the streaming side, but here they're really making a bunch of companion content for their their corpus of Apple TV shows. And that is exactly what Apple ended up showcasing. One of their key demos featured prehistoric planet Two, where you can get up close and personal with these dinosaurs. Now resolution has always been a problem with VR media, but gosh, Apple has some insane specs. So this content is going to look phenomenal. Now in terms of experiences you can expect to see on the Apple Vision Pro, look out for TikTok. And this is interesting because ByteDance, the parent company for TikTok, recently released this AI model that produces these phenomenal depth maps. Now, this is obviously useful for all manner of offline workflows, but it also works in real time. So you can do stuff like this. Now, I've got a feeling it's not just gonna be crazy AR effects, but you could upconvert your 2D stream of TikTok videos into 3D in real time and enjoy that all inside of your headset. I mean, TikTok certainly has the chops to do some basic in-painting. And it's not just up converting 2D content to be 3D, sort of like what Leiapix does today for their tablets, which by the way, every major OEM has a monitor coming out featuring them. So that's definitely another company you should be looking at if you don't wanna shell out 3,500 or four grand for an Apple Vision Pro, but still want that 3D experiences and have it be glasses free, by the way, not sponsored. But beyond up converting 2D content, Apple also wants you to natively capture 3D stuff. I've talked about in previous videos how memory capture is one of the key use cases Apple is touting, and certainly one of the ones that got me into photogrammetry almost a decade ago in the first place. Now, another prediction I'd made before the launch back in July last year is whether the new iPhones would let you capture 3D photos and videos like those showcased at the Apple Vision Pro event. And that is exactly what ended up happening. So now in the latest iOS 
OS beta, you can use that stereo pair on your iPhone and capture stereoscopic video. And since the baseline is very narrow, Apple's using machine learning to magnify that baseline to resemble the distance between your eyes to amplify that stereoscopic effect in headsets. Now think about it. You're out and about in the world, all these precious moments, spaces, places, people. You can document all of that in stereo 3D and relive it inside of this headset. And you can really tell like how much more powerful it is to look back at your memories when they have this depth to them, whether it's a photo or a video, they feel like alive in a sense that is really difficult to describe. I mean, depending upon the shot, like it could almost feel like the person standing there in front of you, right? Like the, the scale has to be right and all that. But having that depth into that scene really, really brings back that f like feeling of space and being there so much more than what just, you know, a photo on Facebook or or whatever is going to do. I think we're going to see an amazing renaissance in stereo video and all the companies that have been making consumer 360 video hardware are going to start getting into the stereo game. We already saw Canon experimenting a bunch of these type of prototypes at CES 2024. So that's perhaps a sign of what else is to come. What Apple is calling spatial video is essentially 3D video or stereoscopic video. So that's like the kind of 3D that you'd expect to see when you're in a movie theater, put on the glasses, you know, avatar, whatever you see it on there. So Vision Pro can play that back. Spatial video can play that back. But there's a whole other set of what we'll call immersive video or 180 3D video. This is, it's also stereo, it's also 3D, but instead of being like on a screen in front of you, like you'd expect in a movie theater, it is wrapped around you. And it compared to a movie theater where the 3D lets you feel like you can look like through a window into the scene, uh, 180 3D video or immersive video makes it feel so much more like you are in the scene, like you are sitting there next to the person. So there's gonna be a lot of stereo video. I think there's a bunch of virtual production, content creation use cases, desktop productivity use cases, infinite monitors, all that good stuff. Super excited about all of that. Perhaps what I'm even more excited about is opportunity to fundamentally reimagine the content viewing experience. So for example, telemetry rich sports like Formula One could be drastically transformed. In other words, we have to resist this urge to sort of put floating windows everywhere and think spatial first. Now, Johnny Motion made a really, really good point of doing exactly that. Sure, uh, I wanna put windows and data everywhere, but you can kind of already do this with the awesome multi-viewer app. But what if I really took advantage of both my physical viewing space and the geography of the event itself? There's something so appealing about an architectural model, but alive and in perfect sync with a reality unfolding thousands of miles away. Give me a God's eye view of the entire circuit, right on my coffee table. I can glance back and forth between the broadcast and this miniature slice of reality, see every driver's precise position. So this ability to take all the spatial data that already exists and then real-time telemetry, layer it together and put it in the space around you is going to be magical. It's like you've got this God's eye view looking at exactly what's happening from the perspective of the various racing cars as well as the overall map itself. Just imagine cricket, baseball, NBA, the list goes on and on. And there's a bunch of research that's been done on these lines. Finally, we'll have mainstream headsets that can actually display it. This past October, I got a glimpse into this technology underpinning Formula One during my collaboration with Lenovo, who, by the way, is the F1 tech partner. They have all the pieces to go far beyond a traditional broadcast. Now, obviously, Apple's going to be thinking about this connected living room viewing experience, too. And there's a lot of speculation on the Internet about how their next VR acquisition will play into this. Now, based on my experience and what I know about the next VR tech, I don't expect much there beyond stereo video streams. But again, I am far more excited about this drastic reimagining, also similar to the NFL Pixar collaboration we saw not too long ago, where they took computer vision and 3D rendering tech to transport that entire game and reskin it to be inside of the Toy Story world. So you can have those first person perspectives, the third person perspectives, just so, so magical. But I'm curious, what do you think? Do you think this is going to transform broadcasting or is this yet another gimmick to bring in younger viewers? I don't know, but what I'm excited about is now we've got the spatial canvas to actually play around with this stuff. Now, finally, I wanna talk about how does this compare to the Meta Quest 3? Well, the first thing I wanna point out is just the carrying case for the Apple Vision Pro is half the cost of a whole ass Meta Quest 3 headset. But I still viscerally remember 
the audience reaction at the very, very end of the, uh, you know, reveal where they said the price, everybody in this huge audience at WWDC, it was like a, whoa, like, <laughs> like, I don't know about that. Hilarious. So, I mean, like, there's just no cost comparison, which is why I think the iOS versus Android analogy is the right one here, where companies like Meta, Google with their Samsung collaboration will chase after the scaled market. We'll see players like Apple going after the high-end space. Android VR plays like Sony's headset is kind of leaning more towards Apple, creating this super, super high-end device more for enterprise customers. But in all of this, Apple has one distinct advantage, and that is computing hardware. It's gonna give them a huge edge to build this ultimate mixed reality headset. Now, thus far, Apple has given tech reviewers three rounds of viewings of the Apple Vision Pro. And pretty much across the board, everyone is stating that this is now the gold standard. And in my opinion, it has a lot to do with their dual chip architecture. By the way, I just wanna point out how freaking hilarious it is that every single tech reviewer was imaged in the exact same pose doing relatively the exact same motion. I guess Apple really likes to control their narrative. In fact, Nile Patel had this hilarious line about how creepy he felt that a bunch of Apple employees were standing around him with iPads looking at exactly what he's seeing. I still don't know what they are because I was in a totally controlled 30 minute demo loop with like a lot of people watching me and people around me watching what I was watching on their iPads, which is just Great. a weird way to live. Yeah, but the, the part yes. where it's like you're you're using the computer and they can see what your eyes are looking at because yeah. they're, they're monitoring you on the iPad. It's like, I didn't, I didn't mm. push the boundaries of the Vision Pro in that experience. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, I'm looking at a, that's a webpage. Cool and slightly Orwellian and perhaps a sign of what else is to come. But back to the dual chip architecture, I think this is going to be huge. So folks like, like Scott Stein for CNET stated this clearly, right? It's like, look, this thing is cinema quality. It's just phenomenal. Like hand tracking, iOS apps, all that cool stuff is, but the fidelity is just insane. And the way they're able to do this is with that dual chip architecture. All right. So the M2 chip is impressive by itself, but there's another R1 chip that is wholly dedicated to processing like 20 plus sensor streams, giving you a virtually lag-free view of the world to the display. This R1 chip can parse and pass through that reality in under 12 milliseconds. That is eight times faster than blinking. So what this means is that M2 chip can focus on the operating system, perception algorithms, and of course, rendering high-res stereo 3D graphics at high frame rates to that display. In other words, developers get the headroom and flexibility to create experiences without worrying prematurely about performance optimization. Oh my God, the tracking is getting laggy. Don't worry about that. The R1 processes all the sensor streams. You've got a beefy M2 chip to handle everything else and it's gonna be magical. So cheaper headsets like the Quest 3 will lack that dual chip advantage and they need to do it all on one Qualcomm chip. This makes the developer experience challenging because you need to trade off visual fidelity to ensure the basics don't suffer. Yet, there is still a lot of magic to be had. Okay, to summarize, does this mean Apple will surpass Meta? Honestly, it is too early to tell. Even if Apple has the compute and hardware advantage, the ultimate determinant of success will be the quality and the quantity of the content. And this remains the ongoing perpetual challenge for spatial computing to truly become a reality. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about my future uploads. As I mentioned, I spent a decade working in AR VR. I've got all the headsets that exist today and I've obviously got the Apple Vision Pro coming on day one. So look out for a review on that and I will see y'all in the next one. Cheers.